Calcium, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about P waves in ECG. You know that P waves are originating from the SA node or atrium. Normally P waves are dome shape, they are a semicircular shape and the height of the P wave is in ECG grids. It is 2.5 boxes and the width of the P wave should be 2.5 to 3 boxes. So the height of the P wave is 2.5 box uh, length of the p wave or breadth of the p wave is 2.5 to 3 small squares normally we are seeing or we are observing the p waves in lead to that's why we are taken lead to as a rhythm strip but if you see the v1 lead there you can see a biphasic p wave a first part of the p wave that is positive that is that indicates the right atrium and second part of the P wave that is uh, negative that indicates uh, left atrium. But we don't see P waves normally in a rhythm strip. Rhythm strip uh, we, we don't see the V1 as a rhythm strip. Normally we take lead 2 as rhythm strip. So we will be talking about P waves in lead 2. So lead, uh, in lead 2 uh, you can see P waves are al always upright. There is a dome shape. Height is 2.5 divisions. Width is 2.5 to 3 divisions. P waves are originated originating from the atrium or SA node. It is originating during the atrial activation uh, and uh, a, a, a P wave uh, height is 2.5 and width is uh, 2.5 uh, small squares. A tall P wave, very tall P wave indicates a right atrial enlargement in lead 2. So we are talking about lead 2. A very tall P wave more than 2.5 blocks indicates right atrial enlargement and a wide bifid P wave in lead to indicates left atrial enlargement. Uh, remember that we are talking about lead 2 that is taken as a rhythm strip on the down, uh, down part of the ECG paper. You can see a very tall P wave indicates right atrial enlargement, a bifid and a wide P wave indicates left atrial enlargement. So this ECG shows a wide notched P wave that is more than two and a half divisions. It's a classical classical finding seen in left atrial enlargement. This finding is called as uh, P mitral M shape P. Remember M shape P P mitral classically seen in left atrial enlargement. The commonest condition which produces left atrial enlargement is mitral stenosis. So see, remember a wide notched M shape P wave is P mitral that is classically seen in left atrial enlargement. It is uh, the left atrial enlargement is a classic finding seen in mitral stenosis. This ECG you can see very tall P waves. This is called as a peaked P wave is called as P pulmonal. So there is a uh, classical condition where you get P pulmonal is uh, right atrial enlargement. Right atrial enlargement is commonly seen in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So this finding you can see in many patients with COPD. So a tall peaked P wave more than two and a half divisions in ECG is a sign of P pulmonal that is classically seen in core pulmonal or COPD with uh, right atrial enlargement. So this ECG again you can see it's a 12 lead ECG. All leads you can see P is very uh, tall. You can make a diagnosis of uh, right atrial enlargement. This is called as P pulmonal. And this ECG you can see P is bifid and notched. It's a 12 lead ECG. Almost all leads you can see P wave is wide and notched. This is called as P mitral. This is a classical finding seen in left atrial enlargement. Now we have seen two important uh, diseases, a tall P wave, P mitral, uh, uh, tall P wave, P pulmonal, a wide P wave, P mitral. Now we will see uh, in atrial fibrillation what is happening. So you may be knowing that at in atrial fibrillation atria beats around 600 beats per minute. So you are not going to get a normal P wave in your ECG tracing. But all the 600 beats are not going to transmit to the ventricle. Only randomly around 160 to 200 may transmit to ventricle. In that case you get a random QRS complex that is irregularly irregular. So any ECG you are seeing QRS complex are coming irregularly irregular you can make a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation. You may see the P wave, you may not see wavy P baseline, but whatever it is, if you are getting irregularly irregular QRS complexes, 
you have to make a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation this ecg you can see uh, the lowermost part you can see a rapid heartbeat with irregularly irregular qrs complex that is atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate the upper part is uh, a controlled rate with atrial fibrillation qrs complex are irregular but the ra uh, rate is controlled so atrial fibrillation uh, you can make a diagnosis like this irregular narrow complex qrs tachycardia that is atrial fibrillation now this ecg what you are seeing is a sawtooth appearance in, in between two qrs complex complexes this is a classical finding you see in atrial flutter so atrium is flutter fluttering uh, atrial flutter means pacemaker site is an ectopic atrial focus so you can see a multiple atrial uh, ectopics and uh, it produces short tooth like appearance qrs complex may come regularly so in this ecg what you are seeing every three p wave every three or four p waves you are getting one qrs complex this is classical of atrial flutter impulses travel in a circular course in inside the atria will produce a atrial flutter so this ecg what you are seeing uh, four p waves then one qrs complex again four p waves one qrs complex this looks like a short tooth so short toothing uh, picture is classically seen in atrial flutter what you are seeing in this ecg is wandering pacemaker you can see the p waves uh, in the first complex there is a p wave but the complexes are different in first ecg complex second ecg complex and third ecg complex if fourth ecg complex is invert p waves are inverted so all the uh, areas you are seeing different morphological p waves that is because the pacemaker is varying from side to side so every beat uh, the uh, pacemaker is varying so one one time it may be originating from the sa node another time may it may be originating from the left atrium other time it may be originating from the junction that's why you are getting a negative p wave so the morphology of p wave is varying you can call it as a wandering pacemaker the same type of ecg if you are getting tachycardia so p waves morphologies are different but heart rate is very very high you have to call it as a multifocal atrial tachycardia the focus of the origination of the electrical current is different that's why we call it as multifocal uh, it is originating from the atrium that's why it is called as multifocal atrial and patient is having tachycardia you call it as multifocal atrial tachycardia this is classically seen in hypoxia especially in patients with copd with acute exacerbation so hypoxia is the co commonest condition which which can produce multifocal atrial tachycardia the treatment for multifocal atrial tachycardia is always correction of oxygenation now what you are seeing in this ecg is the first ecg complex is normal second ecg complex is normal third one you are not seeing fourth one you are not seeing fifth one again you are seeing in the third and fourth you are not seeing a p wave you are not seeing a qrs complex that means atria is not generating an electrical impulse junction is not generating an electrical impulse even ventricle is not generating any electrical impulse so there is a long pause this is called a sinus pause or sinus arrest this continues sometimes patient can develop sudden death so sinus pause is a dangerous condition any time patient can uh, uh, die that that means uh, heart can go to arrest any time okay now what you are seeing in this ecg is you are not seeing a proper p wave or p waves are inverted or even p waves can come after the qrs complex that is because the uh, electrical activity is originating from the junction and it may travel back to your normal conduction pathway then only it it will come to av node and ventricle so the p waves are all, always inverted or it can occur even after qrs complex so the atrium and ventricle activation is not in a normal uh, way the junction current the current starts from the junction uh, and it uh, stimulates the ventricle then only it may stimulate the atrium that's why you are getting a inverted p wave or p wave after qrs complex 
this is called as junctional rhythm normally junction uh, has got a uh, heart rate around uh, 60 beats per minute sometimes you can get tachycardia then you can call it as junctional tachycardia so we have discussed about different type of uh, uh, pathological p waves normally p waves are originating from the sa node they are dome shaped the height is 2.5 divisions the breadth is uh, 2.5 division to 3 divisions in the height is more you can call it as p pulmonal the width is more you can call it as p mitral p pulmonal is classically seen in uh, right atrial enlargement p mitral is classically seen in left atrial enlargement then if you are not seeing proper p waves the heart rate is coming irregularly you call it as atrial fibrillation if you are seeing multiple type of p waves heart rate is slow you can call it as uh, wandering pacemaker if the heart rate is very very high you call it as multifocal atrial tachycardia if you are seeing a inverted p or p wave after the qrs complex you have to suspect a junctional rhythm if the junctional rhythm with tachycardia occurs you can call it as junctional tachycardia